So I've been gone for a week. Any misogynistic shit happen while I was away? Y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. I sat down to do this today and I just couldn't. Because you see, step one in bringing you this segment is combing through the various news sources where you find the most misogyny. Sure, sometimes we get great twin stories in our inbox at scathingnews at gmail.com, but mostly I find them in the wild. I go to right-wing websites and left-wing watchdogs, and I look for the kind of shit that matches what we talk about here. But right now, all those right-wing websites are gloating, and all those left-wing watchdogs are talking about the gloating, and I just can't take it. America was given the choice between a well-qualified, articulate, compassionate, intelligent woman and a pampered, boorish, heartless idiot of a man, and they chose the second one. And it's a story every woman is familiar with because it's a story that every woman has lived through. And even the parts of the media sphere that I can stomach at this point are already hard at work churning out that fog of denial. They're all going, gee, what could possibly account for so many people in so many demographics turning against the nominee that voted for Biden? Yeah, what possible difference could there be that would unite people across racial lines like that? And they'll tell me it can't be sexism because Harris's support dropped among women too, as though women can't be sexist, as though anybody can be raised up in this patriarchal culture without internalizing some of its sexism. And of course, it wasn't just one woman on the ballot. We all were. Even when you set aside the fact that the man we elected is an adjudicated rapist who brags about sexually assaulting women and ran on a platform that promised to protect women whether they like it or not. Because the biggest change Trump was able to wrest from America in his first term was repealing the right to abortion. It was his signature achievement. It was his Obamacare. And even though he kind of ran away from it down the stretch in the campaign, when you look at the people he's surrounding himself with and the people he's pandering to, there's no question that it gets worse from there. Take the way J.D. Vance and Elon Musk judge women by the size of their broods, for example. Vance gave a speech in 2021 about the problems with no-fault divorce, where he strongly implied that women in abusive relationships should at least try to work things out first. Elon Musk has said multiple times that declining birth rates are going to lead to the collapse of civilization. You couple that with the Christian ongoing effort to restrict access to contraception, and you'd have to be deluded not to think access to that is at risk. Look, Harris lost for a lot of reasons, and everybody seems to think her loss proves their point. But women all over this country lost along with her. And if you doubt me on that, I'm sure Trump's new, even more unhinged administration will be quick to prove my point for me. And I just want to add one thing before I wrap this up. A lot of people sent me emails and messages in the aftermath of the election expressing their fear and resentment and desperation. And I was as overwhelmed as y'all were, so I didn't answer back to as many of those as I would have liked to. But I am proud that you felt safe to send me those thoughts. And I want to make sure that you know that I'll remain a safe place for them. And on that note, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Eli, and Marsh.